Today, I'm making a character, Laura, for SDXL in DrawThings. DrawThings is a stable diffusion client for Mac and iOS. It's free on the app stores. The lores we make in DrawThings are standard Laura that can be exported and shared with the broader stable diffusion community. Now, this is going to be a basic walkthrough for beginners. I'll talk you through the settings, what you need to know, if you just want an EXO character lore that works. I'll also show you how to get the memory footprint down. There are some tricks in the settings, and I'll show you how to monitor these as you go. So you know exactly which settings are saving memory. At the end of the video, I'll show you a foolproof test so you can check 100% whether your LoRa is working or not. Open the LoRa Manager and click on the Training Shoe that opens the new interface for setting up our LoRa Training Session. Now these defaults are the high end. You will need to adjust the parameters to get the memory footprint down. On the left, we're going to load Training Photos and on the right are all of our parameter settings. So let's do the settings first. First things, we're going to pick a model. I'm using Excel Base 1.0, but you can choose any of your models really, but a base model will have the broadest compatibility. And Excel LoRa only works with Excel models and of course SD 1.5 LoRa only work with 1.5. Now if you have low RAM on your device, the dev recommends that you train using the 8-bit Excel Base. Now with the output Laura name, this is the name you're going to see in the drop-down list. And here's a trick. If you interrupt the training and come back later and input the same name, Draw Things will bring up all the settings here. You can resume training, continuing from the last save checkpoint. Now the trigger word is, of course, your unique word for this character or style that you're training. I'm sure you know how this works. Network dimension dictates the file size of your final LoRa, and that seems a little weird, like the file size is unrelated to the amount of useful data inside. It's preset to 32, which will create a lot of large files in your DrawThings Models folder. If you're worried about memory footprint, try training at 16 or even at 8 dim. I see some small savings, about a gig or more or less, but every little bit helps if you're training with lower memory devices. Now it's the nature of Laura that they train a lot more in the early steps, and the later steps are for refining, and eventually you're training, but the Laura isn't learning anything new. In case your Lauras are cooking too fast, you can double the network scale, and it should take twice as many steps to converge. That's usually not what you want, but uh, ah, if you're trying to do something fancy towards the beginning, uh, this is going to help you spread out the training. Next is the UNET learning rate, and you'll read a lot about this one online, but the reality is this is a very tiny setting that has a relatively small effect on how quickly the images will train. Now the default is fine. It's maybe a little fast, but any value that works is honestly fine. So start with the default until you know what you're doing and you've confirmed that your training has worked. Next is image size, and this one does matter. I'm using 1024 by 1024 because I have 64 gigabytes on my Mac Studio, so optimization for me, hasn't really been a priority. But we can cut the memory demand drastically by reducing this resolution. And then we can monitor it through a Mac utility called Activity Monitor. At 1024 by 1024, we're looking at an average of over 30 gigabytes of RAM usage. Remember, you need to leave room for the OS too, so that's cutting it pretty close if you've got a 34 gigabyte Mac. Now, reducing the resolution to 768 by 768, the overhead drops to an average of about 20 gigabytes. And at 512 by 512, the overhead is closer to 12 gigabytes. Now, through the activity monitor, we can see these numbers are spiking higher than the average, 
Will that cause a crash? I don't know. <laughs> it will probably slow down as the device needs to swap video RAM with your storage memory. Now, image size will be the biggest factor in reducing the memory footprint of your training. Excel will still generate at normal resolutions, even if your LoRa images were trained at lower res. There is a visual difference, but it's not as significant as you might think. Now we get to the training steps, and how many do you actually need? Well, that's probably the $64,000 question. The default here is $5,000. Uh, uh, and that's probably way too high. I suggest your first session is no more than 1,500 to 2,000 steps. Remember, we can always resume training by reloading the LoRa by name. You just set the total number of steps higher and it will continue. Now for advanced users, you can actually plan ahead to stop and restart training wherever you want. You might change the settings at each stage and continue training with, for instance, a different learning rate or even a different set of photos. Now saving at every N steps, that's going to become a diagnostic tool as you start and this is a checkpoint where we can safely interrupt and resume without losing the increments we've already finished. Now, other training calls this epochs. It's not exactly the same because this is draw things and everything has to be slightly different. But this is basically the equivalent of epochs. It wraps up the training and saves a complete LoRa at each increment. So the early training steps are very strong they can overpower the rest of the training and this warm-up steps eases into the training so leave it at the default until you know what you're looking at now I'm going to ignore the last settings and leave them just as they are except for this co-train the text model I'm going to make sure this is switched off for Excel and I'll also switch it off to save RAM now, Check all these rollover tooltips on these leftover settings for why and how maybe you'd use them in the future. Consider those to be specialized, advanced workflows that might give you ideas for the future lores that you're going to train. Now, before we import our images to train, decide if we want fixed or automatic captions. Automatic is a new feature that uses an image-to-text interrogator called Blip. It's pretty basic, the descriptions are short. So decide if you want to edit them further or remove descriptions of things that you definitely want in the training data. And uh, there's another magic trick. If we go back to our trigger word and hit enter or change the trigger and hit enter, the trigger word is added to the front of the captions. Now when we load these images again, these captions will be loaded too, so edit them, change the caption, or just use the trigger word alone with nothing else. My training images are cropped to the face. I don't get any better results with more detailed captions. Mm, not better than the trigger word alone. But everyone's going to have different training images, so you'll need to test and see. If you've never done training before, all you really need is the trigger word, so don't overthink captions until there's an actual problem showing up in the model that's my suggestion save you some headache and time and worrying so that's it we're ready to start the training session now i made a script to load each of my incremental laura checkpoints and my laura converged almost right away i hit that ceiling and all these higher steps are exactly the same now, Draw Things has a safety clamp that prevents overcooking, so you're just going to see the same model on all your later steps, just like I do. You're not getting any further, you're just kind of spinning your wheels. The default settings result in pretty fast training, at least on Excel. The actual settings will vary because of the number of photos and your learning rate and yada yada yada. The only way to know for sure is to test the results by generating with the saved checkpoints. And you want to find that point where the model switches over to fixed. 
Now, to put it another way, the models won't look overcooked, but there's a point where the extra training is just a waste of your time. And then overfitting sets in where the lawyer won't give you expressions or poses, just a frozen face. Now, after training, when your Laura is done, back in the Laura Manager, we can click on the ellipses, that's these three dots, to convert the model down to 16-bit and export. Now, give this video a like if you think this might help other people, and subscribe if you personally found it useful. I do have other Draw Things tutorials, and I cover other topics on this channel, too. Maybe some crossover with your interests. That's all I have time for you this time, so I will thank you for watching, and I hope you had a learn. And I will see you next time.